What is up you guys? You're watching the Surgery Secret. Before I get started with today's video, um, I'll be leaving in the description box all the items that I've talked about in today's video if, if you want to reference it. And today's video is going to be my spring anti-haul. So I know I've done these in the past where I've done them like monthly or through the season. So I think doing them through the seasons is a little bit easier. Um, I know some other people do their anti-hauls like monthly, but that's more for like, I see more people do that for more cosmetics. So I feel like I don't really talk a lot about makeup. There is some things that I'm going to be talking about, but these are just things that I personally feel like I will be skipping out on or I don't necessarily feel the need to. It's a generalization of items or actual items that I want to talk about. So let's go ahead and get started and let me know if you agree or disagree or if there's any items that you will not be purchasing um, a season because I'm looking at my wardrobe, I'm seeing what I'm missing, what I need, what I don't want, what I don't love. And I definitely do see my shift uh, a lot. So these kind of reflect my new style that I'm going towards. So the first thing that I'm going to be anti-hauling in the springtime is going to be the Diane Von Furstenberg X Target Collection. <laughs> This collection is anticipated to drop on the 23rd of March. Now, in the past with collaborations, I've always just bought it just more for the hype and let's just be straight up honest to make content, but I don't necessarily shop that way. I don't necessarily buy things to make content. I want to make sure whatever I personally purchase has meaning and value outside of me bringing a camera or taking a video or doing an affiliate link. I want to make sure that it is an item that is going to be used, it's going to be loved, you know? So I personally went to the Target website and I saw all the items that are listed. Everything's just too printed for me. I love Diane von Furstenberg as a person. I think her line is really nice. Uh, I love seeing her when she was on the E! reality TV show. But just for me, for this collection, there is nothing that was like, wow, I have to have, or, you know, it was not very wow worthy for me personally. So therefore, I'm not going to be purchasing this. I know you guys are asking me to review it. I may go into Target um, before work and I may do like a little TikTok video and then my YouTube shorts. So you may be able to see that. But I think those days of me buying collaboration, collaboration, just because a brand or a name is associated with it that I don't wear in general, I feel like those days are over. And so therefore, um, the DVF, X Target is not going to be something that I'm going to be purchasing. Next item is going to be a handbag that I've been seeing get pushed on social media and it is the Balmain Jolie handbag. It literally looks like a sneaker. I believe it's $12.95 here in the States. I just think that it is a handbag that is very trendy. I think there's not been one Balmain handbag that I go and I look at and I'm like, I have to have that bag. I love it. Actually, there's a line. There's one that looks like a guitar that's actually this season that looks like this. That is actually a really nice Balmain bag. But other than that, I, with, throughout the years of Balmain handbags, I have not seen a handbag that was like, oh my god, I have to have it. I think they do ready to wear really well. I think they do other categories and accessories really well. But I just, they're just, I think their handbags just lacks a little bit of creativity. They lack a little bit more, mm, they don't have, they just says Balmain on it. So I want to see more design elements in the bags, especially if the clothes are really well. I'm not sure why they haven't had like a very it bag. I think Balmain has the potential to have an it bag and to be like a bag of the season. But I have yet to see that from Balmain. So we shall see. But this bag... Definitely no, I see it being pushed, but it just literally looks like a shoe and I feel like it is like it's not an item where I'm like I have to have and I've been getting asked you guys know you guys can always email me on things or DM me on Instagram and I was getting my thoughts my opinions on this bag and I'm just not a fan of it at all. Next thing that I'm going to be anti-hauling is going to be um, the 21 days of beauty for Ulta and I have a few reasons why I'm boycotting the 21 days of a beauty from Ulta. Well, they changed it. It's now the semi-annual sale. So for me, I don't like this new direction that Ulta is taking. And I like Ulta. I like Sephora. I don't, I used to have a preference more of Sephora than Ulta. Honestly, they're both about the same, you know, give or take. I buy my cosmetics from different places. I'm not 
one Sephora girl. I'm not a department girl. I'll buy them wherever, you know, I'm shopping around and what brand is it. But I do not like the structure of the 21 Days of Beauty or like this the Ulta Beauty, the Ulta semi-annual sale, how they just tell us a week ahead. I like it when it was the 21 Days, they told us everything that was on sale. Maybe there was a bonus item the day of, but I just don't like that. It's just by bi weekly, um, you know, even though like Sephora and other places price match their prices, um, I don't really like that. So, for example, there's a few items that I want that I will actually be buying it from Sephora just because um, Ulta decided to do this change of the 21 days to say my annual sale. So, hopefully, they get a lot of constructive criticism and hopefully they go back to the 21 days of beauty because I prefer that. So, because they changed it, I'm just going to go buy it from Sephora. So, maybe they could see where people's dollars is is voting towards because for me i liked it when it was 21 days of beauty i'll place my order pick it up later that same day but you know this time around if sephora's price matching and sephora carries it i'm just gonna buy it from sephora just because i don't like this new structure this this is kind of like my 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 little stance that i'm putting towards but i know i'm not the only one so let me know what you guys think if you are an ulta girl do you like the 21 days of beauty or do you like this ulta semi-annual so I would definitely love to hear it in the comment section, but this is my little boycott. Well, I'll go buy it from the competitor, but hopefully they go and they change it for next time. Next one is going to be Jacquemus X Nike. They came out with the bag with the little push on it and with this bag as well, but just a generalization of Jacquemus bags. Um, I just am not a Jacquemus person, uh, Jacquemus, how people say it. I'm just not a big fan of it. I think it's very seasonal. It's very trendy. Um, I think for me, for my collection, it's a little bit more refined. I definitely feel like it looks a little too juvenile for my taste, even though I'm 23. I feel like it's not something, it's something that I would buy when I was like 16 or 17. Now that I'm kind of maturing, it's not a bag that I would go for. But I definitely did get asked in the DMs what were my opinions on the Nike Wish bag. It's cute. I like the idea. I like the novelty of it. But I don't wear Nike. That's one of the brands that I don't wear. There's a few brands that I don't wear at all. And I do not wear Nike at all. Um, just a personal preference. And so Jack Moose bags, Nike, that doesn't really go well for me. So those are the two brands that I don't really reach for. I don't think about when I go shopping. I might, if I'm at North Park, oh my God, let me go to the Nike store. That does not come out of my mouth. Let me go to the little lemon store. That, those words do not come out of my mouth. So I would definitely go into say anti-haul uh, Jack Moose, but particularly the Jack Moose Nike collab. Um, too novelty for me. If you are a Nike, even love Megan the Stallion. I love Megan the Stallion. I'm going to see her on concert when she does her little tour in the next following months. Um, the Hot Girl Summer Tour. She came out with a Nike shoe with Nike clothes. I just don't like Nike. So even though I listen to Megan Stallion every day, I know every single song word to word. I feel like I, I want to get front row seats, tickets, and everything. Just because it's Nike, I'm not gonna buy it. So I do not, I, I, I do not buy the sneakers. I was like this close from buying a pair of Nike Magna Stallion shoes, but I just don't like Nike, and so I just didn't buy it. So um, that goes to show you, like, even if it's my fit, one of my top five women artists, even if they were to do a collab with Nike, I still wouldn't buy it. So. There goes to show you that I'm not a big Nike girl at all. People are going to ask me why. That's a whole other video. But for athletic clothing, I'm definitely more of a sweaty Betty slash aloe type of girly. Those are the brands I kind of reach for a little bit more. But particularly sweaty Betty just because I think their quality uh, reflects their price point. And even if it's on sale, it's even better. Um, the next thing I'm going to be anti-hauling is going to be basket bags. In general, basket bags are just not worth the money. Now, there's a difference between basket bags and raffia bags. I think raffia bags are a good seasonal investment. If you buy a nice Raffia bag, like a Toy Birch one, or even a designer one, like from Chloe, I think that they're worth the money because that's something you can always pull out. It may not be something you can wear 365 days out of the year, but realistically, especially like if you live, you know, like here in Texas, you can pull that bag anywhere from like March all the way to like September. So you can get a good amount of wear, maybe in your closet for a few short months, but for the most part, I do think that that's worth the money, a raffia bag. But I think basket bags that are structured, that are very delicate, like we're talking about the Celine one, we're talking about the Loewe one, we're talking about, you know, those very sturdy basket bags. 
um, or even Demilier has one for $300 or $400. I still don't think those are worth the money. I think those, no matter how well you pack them, no matter how well you treated them, it only takes to slam on your brakes. It only takes for the person at the airport to throw your luggage. It only takes for you to have too much to drink and you know you don't take care of your bag. For that bag to not have its shape, to not have its balance, they're very, very delicate handbags. And so for me, I definitely don't see the value in basket bags. And I told myself, Sergio, you've been through three little wave basket bags. You're just not going to do it no more. So this season, I am looking to buy a Rafia bag. If you guys have any recommendations, I would love to hear it down in the comment section. But definitely, basket bags is something that I will not be reaching for. Um, also, in this you know summertime, are going to be the Prada tank tops, the Loewe tank, all those designer tank tops. Literally, guys, it is literally a tank top with embroidery. You know, if I'm paying $500 for the wave a tank top, I'm not going to do anything for my wardrobe. If anything, I will rather take a class, learn how to stitch, and put an S for Sergio, go on Etsy, put a little plaque, stitch it in, and have a little metal piece that says S for Sergio, or, you know, something along those lines. I'm not going to do it. I know people have paid $1,000 for a product tank top, $500 for a low-wave tank top. Those days are just over for me. Those don't do necessarily anything for my wardrobe, and so... I will not be doing it. I don't think that they're worth the money. And like I say, I will not wear a designer brand as a tank top. I would much rather have my own name because why would I not have my own name? So that's just me. If you like the designer tank tops, that's good for you. But definitely not something that I see myself or like the Dior ones or the Fendi ones. Those are just a waste of money, especially they're white. They get dirty really fast. Uh, it's just not a no for me. I'd rather buy body suits or tank tops from Aritzia for under 50 bucks and call it a day and if I really want to have my name on it I can either pay somebody or I can learn how to do it myself and I will have a new skill set that I can use for other things so that being said tank tops absolutamente no um next one are going to be a pair of sunglasses that I have fell in love with I try them on very consistently you guys know I work in accessories I work in designer handbags so I work with these things and these are the Celine Trophy glasses I love these on every single person. I love selling these glasses, but they just do not look good on me. And all my friends say, they just don't look good on you. You have too much of a big head. And, you know, surprisingly, I have been meeting a lot of you guys recently. And one of the things I always get is like, oh my God, you are a lot bigger in person. Like, we would think you're a little bit more smaller, like my frame. But I'm definitely like, I'm pretty tall and I'm to lleno, you know what I mean? So I would definitely say... The Chofi sunglasses, as much as I love them, they are just not for me. If you guys have them and you look fabulous in them, just know I'm a very... Soy poquito celoso, I'm just playing, but I'm a little jealous that y'all can look good in it. But for me, definitely, I they just don't look good on me at all. But if you if you have them and they look good on you, just know I'm always going to compliment you on them. Because I love the Chofi glasses from Celine, but they are just not for me so unfortunately they have to be in this anti-haul um the next thing that i'm going to be putting on my anti-haul is going to be um anything from burberry um i have walked into the boutiques when i was in new york i walked into seeing a lot of the new burberry items first of all i think that it's extremely expensive for and I, that's a whole other video that i can make if you guys want to see it from the moment that i was in high school from christopher bailey to ricardo tishy to um daniel lee the price points and the style of the clothing is so different from the moment i started working more mid to designer retail as far as merchandising to what it is now for the brand of burberry is just so different like it is actually insane i remember in high school this is just an example for a uh, men's polo shirt for example when i was in high school I would, you know, I would save my money, I would save my coins working at Chick-fil-A, you know what I mean? If you guys know my little story, you know, I would go into the Burberry store and I would buy those Burberry men's polos that were like 175 okay? Back then, that was a lot of money to me, that would be like something that I would spend one week's worth of paycheck on, obviously I was like 16. And, you know, I loved it, you know, I was going for it, this was Christopher Bailey, I love Burberry. And then, you know, they so that polo was 175 keep that in mind. And then when Ricardo Tichy took over, it went up. And now, current day and age, a Burberry polo. And I have one of the newer ones that I bought maybe like a year ago in a navy color. To my, but anyway, that current polo, that's what was 175 is now $500.
the bags used to be a very reasonable Burberry banner it used to be 1695 it's a lot of money but now something like that in Burberry is $3,500 plus and I think that the style changes super frequently you know to have three creative designers within a 10 year time frame and honestly to God I don't really see Daniel Lee lasting a lot in Burberry. When I go into the website, I don't really see a lot of commercial pieces. I don't see things that, unless you're trying to downsize as a brand, I don't really see like a lot of wow items, the, the popular items. I don't really see that. And so for me, I did like Burberry for Ricardo Tishy. I did like, it was a little bit more flashier when I was like living in Houston. I loved it. Now it's not necessarily my style per se now, but for what it, for that era, I liked it. But I just feel like Burberry's in that confusion, ex like super expensive, like it's in that era where I don't really feel like spending the money on Burberry. I do have like a Burberry items that I still love and I still wear in my collection, but for me to go out to the Burberry boutique and buy something full price, I don't see myself doing that. And so we shall see how Burberry will be in the next year or so, um, but when I go look at the bags, there's not a bag where I go in and look at, I think that's worth the money, I think that's beautiful. I'm pretty sure the bags are well made stuff, but I don't think that they're worth the money. I'd rather spend that money on another brand that's a lot more classic, maybe like a Prada, maybe even like a Fendi, even though I'm not a Fendi girl. Um, you know, I think those are well, uh, more well worth your money than, you know, per se, a Burberry handbag. So um, this new Burberry era, I'm low-key not here for it, but we shall see how it goes out. But I want to hear your thoughts and your opinions on it because I know I'm not the only one that thinks like this. Another thing, so I'm kind of getting ready for my spring wardrobe. I just placed a huge order on Aritzia um, and I'm getting rid of a lot of things. Um, I'm going through more of this shift again. And I kind of do this every spring. It's, it's kind of around March and April. I do kind of like a big purge into kind of like what the wardrobe will look like throughout the rest of the year. And I, what I notice when I'm like going through clothing, I have a lot of one-off items. I have an item that I would buy and I would buy items to match that. So if I had a blazer, I would buy things to match that blazer. And then all those other items that I bought don't necessarily go with my wardrobe. So the thing that I'm going to be anti-hauling is just going to be one-off items. I told myself this spring and summer season, I will not buy any, you know, yes, I have like a little wow pieces, what I like to call it, but I would not buy a piece that I feel like I have to buy other things to cater for it. It has to automatically, if it's a wow piece, it automatically has to already blend in into my wardrobe. And I'm not going to be buying any one-off items if it's on sale, if it's 90% off, 95 if it's full price and I love it. I just don't want to buy any like wow pieces that I personally feel like I'm not going to reach for um, out of the season. And now I'm stuck with an item that I spent anywhere from $50 to $500 on or if not more. So definitely I'm not going to be doing any uh, super, super one-off items um, for my wardrobe. I'm trying to stick more with a more classic, more refined style. And then the last thing that I'm going to be anti-hauling is I'm looking to buy a new sandal, but what I'm anti-hauling are going to be designer sandals with logos and plastic designer slides. I think that design plastic designer slides are just not worth the money. If you were to know how much they cost them, I don't think that they're worth the coin. And I also don't think that, uh, and I also don't want my shoes to have like the big logo. I'd rather it be a handbag or another piece of an accessory, not necessarily the shoe. And so therefore, um, I'm still kind of looking at what sandal I want to buy. I have been looking at Jarmito Rossi. I've been looking at the row, some of the Hermes sandals. But definitely I told myself when I, I will buy one sandal for the season. I try to do one designer sandal for every year. And I feel like this year, I definitely want it to be, uh, if I'm spending over 500 bucks, it definitely has to be something that I could wear for the next few years. So if you guys have any, I hate the word, like more discreet sandals, I would definitely love to hear it down in the comment section. But yeah, guys, these are going to be, you know, okay, because sometimes I say 10, but it's actually nine. You'd be surprised. A bit some la onda. But these are the 10 cosas or things or, you know, things that I will not be particularly purchasing in the spring my anti-haul i think that this is really great i think it's really refined and i'm really happy to see where my wardrobe and my style will take me for the rest of the season and into the summer uh, it's hot girl summer we are working out we are getting fit we are getting ready because those te once those temperatures hit man i feel like this year is definitely going to be a hot summer 
But yeah, I want to. But yeah, guys, if you guys give this video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Let me know what other videos getting me done. I'm starting to do live streams again, so um, so always just check my community post because we will be go back on doing live streams one time a week. They'll deter from the week to week, but for the most part, they'll either be towards the end of the week. I want to say thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I love and I appreciate each and every single one of you. Y los miro hasta la próxima video. Bye, guys, and take care.